about a different matter now. It's not about uh, genomic selection. It's not about mathematical equations. But it's more like uh, what what is implementing these uh, methodologies and how users can avail of these methodologies. So we start from from acquiring the data, how to to make it available easily to software, and then how these uh, workflows, and I especially like seeing pipelines, because uh, what I'm going to discuss, oh, sorry, discuss our platforms that enable the, the, uh, the functioning of the software pipelines in, in an open source uh, platform. So I am a geneticist by training, and I got into bioinformatics, because we always got these uh, questions from colleagues who want to have implementations of analysis uh, methods that were that they read from publications. Okay, um, let me start by acknowledging the, the team and the scientists who are uh, involved in this uh, project. So for software development and for the inputs from the laboratory, I have here our two staff members from, from, from Mike Thompson's lab and our team. And of course the lead scientists Mike Thompson, who's leading the Genotyping Service Lab, which initiated all this project. And recently, Nikolai Alexandrov joined us at IRI. So we have now a bigger uh, initiative to capture all these uh, informatics uh, capacities and deliver it to the RICE community. Of course, we have our two program leaders here, Hay and Iran from IRI2. All right. Outline of my talk would be to talk about quickly about ERI's research agenda and its bioinformatics agenda, and to talk about the open bioinformatics platforms that we adopted to support uh, molecular rice breeding data analysis at ERI. And uh, well, this is a slide I uh, I got always from from uh, another presentation, but it's just showing here. Well, this is a busy slide about Erie, but I'm just showing here where we are situated at Erie. So we have a, a, a field plots for rice and our research cluster over here. It's a quite old institution uh, in the CG system. Uh, so with regards to our research agenda, there is now a st single strategic work plan for global rice, rice research, which is known by its acronym now as GRIS, which is Global Rice Science Partnership. So at the core are three CG centers na named here, Africa Rice, of course, IRI, and SIAT, and all our numerous, numerous research partners that are to, uh, there are a number of them to mention here. And we recognize that there is a need to share research solutions across centers and ultimately to the, to the research community at large. And then also a new development, no, not really new, but one of the developments that is driving uh, many research activity is next generation sequencing. We have no escape from that. That is the most cost effective a methodology now to generate data sets, especially for molecular breeding. And these three bullets just uh, state the research agenda that IRI has. So first would be about genetic diversity, its characterization. You have seen the, the talk uh, by Ken McNally about the resequencing of uh, 3,000 rice genomes in collaboration with CAAS and BGI and also the development of specialized populations, much similar to what, uh, what uh, uh, Peter Wenzel discussed for seed, these uh, populations based on genetic diversity that are breeder ready. And also looking at candidate gene discovery, so there's this whole work on characterizing QTLs and identifying Q uh, candidate genes that would, would confer the interesting traits for for rice. And the third bullet would be regarding um, rice breeding. So this is delivery of products that, uh, that have the traits of interest. And all of these are using NGS technologies to generate a lot of data. Okay, 
going to the heart of it, the, the challenges uh, eerie scientists faced when they started using NGS would be, of course, with the throughput of data, uh, right away there is a uh, uh, unfamiliarity with that type of data. So seemingly mundane things like, I don't see a gel image now. So how, how do I handle data now? I cannot see the score of my, of my molecular marker. Um, secondly, when they were handed the data sets, they found that they could not use the, the standard applications to even inspect the data set and to manipulate the data set so that it fits into their venerable software that they know how to, to use. So these issues, seemingly, seemingly trivial, have uh, stumped a lot of uh, the molecular scientists into moving into this type of, of, uh, of uh, technology. And then the more computing science uh, problems, like the computer simply runs out of memory when they start analyzing data. And of course, the, as I mentioned, the, the, the software they're familiar with could not handle the data set. So we, need, we identified that we needed to enable these geneticists, molecular biologists, and breeders for bioinformatics. So this is really what's supposed to handle all these uh, data throughput. And the, the, with the evolution of these solutions, we also needed to share this solution across GRISP partners, so-called not reinventing the wheel. When one centers, center finds a solution, they, they should be easy to share among centers, and ultimately to the research community as a whole. OK, diving into the open source platforms right away, uh, the need for the manipulation, pre-processing, and analysis of high throughput data sets, uh, we identified Galaxy Bioinformatics Workbench as an ideal framework to capture all these uh, uh, systems or uh, software that, that does all these things. And then ideally, we'd want a system that captures raw data at, as it exits the genotyping machine without, uh, with minimal human intervention. The more manual steps you introduce with data manipulation, the more likely there are errors, do you agree? So we wanted to have a system that, has, that takes data from the machine and delivers it as analysis-ready data or even analysis results if we could incorporate the, the software in the system. And Galaxy allows that. I'll, I'll discuss this in a bit. And then, of course, second would be the database. So it's the systematic storage of your high throughput data sets. And then uh, for now, with the throughput we have, we are using the uh, output from the Generation Challenge Program, GDMS. So one of my co-authors here, to, uh, if you have more questions about this. Now, with regards to Galaxy, the three features we liked about it, aside from being open source, is that it is accessible to users without programming experience. So it has a, an interface which is like a web form, so it's, it has a graphical interface. Uh, analysis you do here is easily reproducible, so it keeps track of the steps you did in your analysis, and uh, that makes your analysis also transparent. So this system captures it and has the feature to share and publish your analysis methodologies and your results. So frequently we, we just encounter papers that have results already, but it's a pain for us to, to, re to repeat the analysis. So this is why Galaxy was uh, created by the biomedic medical community in the first place, uh, addressing that problem. Now, looking at a standard Galaxy deployment, this is how it looks if you open a Galaxy server in the web. They already have, so there are three panes here that you can see. One pane is uh, handling the delivering of the software analysis tools that you can use. The middle pane would be where your software would display its interface. So if you click on one of these uh, tools, it would give you the interface on how to use the software in this middle part. And then the rightmost pane would be capturing the steps that you have done. So if you use a tool here, 
and has data that is needed by a particular tool, it will all display here. Now, uh, talking about the genotyping uh, capacity at Erie, we started using, we started encountering the need for this uh, capacity, informatics capacity, when the genotyping service laboratory became operational. So in this case, there were three uh, machines, now three machines. We initially started with a, a, a single machine doing the 384 SNPs at a time. Uh, we now have three machines, one for the specific SNP design, one for a medium uh, density SNP uh, data set generation, and then two of these machines have uh, standard or, or built-in software, bundled software to handle their particular data set. So, uh, with collaboration, uh, in collaboration with Cornell uh, colleagues, they already built a plug-in for the, this is particularly the Genome Studio software so that we can get data out of these two machines, Illumina-based machines, and they could be processed by the plug-in and, and the data coming out would be fed into the Erie Galaxy that we are, we, we have created for this uh, particular data workflow. For the fluid dime, we can process the data directly because uh, we built the, the, the processing software into the Erie Galaxy. And then for the GBS type data sets also, uh, this is a more straightforward uh, exercise. So you'll see that in Erie Galaxy, we have SNP calling algorithms from published uh, methodologies, the data preparation and manipulation uh, systems specific for these machines right now. And we have rudimentary genetic association analysis and bioinformatic analysis tools that are incorporated already. All right, so this is how Erie Galaxy looks like right now. So it looks the same as the previous uh, display I showed, except that the tools here are now limited to what is being used at the GSL uh, uh, service lab. Okay, so you can see here that we have the SNP calling algorithms and the subsequent data analysis or data manipulation tools installed for, and also the rudimentary, well not rudimentary, primary filtering tools, especially I'm displaying now a HAP map uh, data filtering tool for, for SNP data pre-processing. So this uh, Erie Galaxy instance is now de deployed in an Amazon uh, uh, cloud instance located in Asia Pacific region and we didn't purposely include NGS assembly tools because when you put NGS assembly tools users will find it and do their NGS analysis easily overwhelming your your machine all right so one of the things we incorporated here would be a genome browser so this is a, a Gmod genome browser containing the latest uh, annotation of rice uh, genome into galaxy so galaxy enables you to put in uh, resources and uh, uh, web resources that, that you are familiar with. So you can see here that the genome browser is a data source in, in the Erie Galaxy. And it has, in here we, we intend to populate this with the comprehensive information on SNPs being generated at the genotyping service laboratory. Also, uh, a feature of Galaxy is the shared data library. So we're exploiting this so that uh, customers of, GB, of the GSL can have their data libraries either uh, private in their own account or publicly shared once the publication has been made. So an example here would be, I'm just showing that in a shared data library, we already have these, uh, the data set coming from a, a uh, magic population. And then, when you click on this, you can see all the data that is uh, generated here. SNP data sets, uh, kinship matrices. So this is really a good way to publish data and enable, uh, ensure reproducibility of analysis of your, of your results. Data man manipulation is essential here. So I'm just showing here that we have installed tools now that does the the task of manipulating your SNP data set so that simple tasks of transforming data row, column, column rows, which do not fit your, uh, your standard software uh, tools, 
are already here. And then it also converts data into various analysis software that our uh, breeders and molecular bi biologists are familiar with already. So I mentioned here Flapjack, QGene, and uh, of course, HapMap data management from the machine to a HapMap format. HapMap is uh, like a very common data format used for SNP uh, data analysis. So it's for uh, genotype visualization, genetic analysis, diversity study software. Tho those types of uh, data manipulation are present already. And uh, this feature we really like uh, very well about Galaxy. So we keep on talking about analysis workflows. And I've seen that when you do these types of analysis like genome selection, uh, GWAS, you really have a clear step of, uh, of analysis uh, that you usually do repeatedly. So i seen from uh, John Hickey's uh, presentation that they have already a pipeline for genome selection analysis. And uh, this is the Galaxy version of implementing a pipeline into a workflow. So you can see here that Galaxy has this, uh, um, what is called a, uh, a workflow canvas where you can define the inputs of your analysis, get the tools that are needed for your analysis, and then you can re readily string together analysis, uh, your analysis workflow. Like in this case, the output of this tool becomes the input of another tool, and so forth and so on. So you don't need to, to keep repeating the manual steps. You just define a workflow. Inputs would be here. You run the workflow, and the outputs would be automatically processed. And as an example, we implemented, we are implementing the Buckler, the Cornell GBS Bioinformatics Pipeline for SNP calling. So if you're familiar with this, you need to do the steps manually. Just getting data and then having SNP calls is a multi-step process. Uh, we are now implementing this in an eerie galaxy so that the, the analysis steps are incorporated already, like there are a, a, around eight steps there, and we are already starting to define the workflow. So with this, uh, as a genotyping service lab, we could just have the genotype data sets of a customer in, 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 uh, in the Galaxy instance and run this workflow. And at the end of the exercise, you have your SNP calls. And if you want to uh, change parameters in SNP calling, you can do that with each step here uh, being customizable. Uh, so it's not a black box. You can intervene with each step of the analysis. Again, a, as a, this is a beauty of using Galaxy. And this is another sample. It's just a SNP. Uh, so it can be as complex as this or as simple as a two-step analysis that you can define in a Galaxy workflow. All right. Now, the, this feature of Galaxy shared data also allows you to publish workflows. So you can make these workflows that you define publicly available. So any any registered user in Erie Galaxy can just log in and fire up a workflow that is already defined but internally or if you have a publication that you state that these are your work analysis steps, you could, uh, we could host it here and anyone could replicate your analysis. So I, this is the GBS calling pipeline and then the BID Express SNP calling pipeline that I uh, showed before. Okay, built in also to Galaxy are already uh, you have their useful SNP analysis data. So this is from the biomedical community, which we could readily adapt for, for uh, our own analysis in the crop science. Uh, these are, well, we still need to clean this up because a lot of the analysis are not really amenable for crops like case control. So this is where we envision that if you have a genotype or a genome selection uh, analysis pipeline, we could easily integrate it in Galaxy, as long as it confirms to the minimum uh, requirements of a Galaxy uh, integratable software piece. All right, so showing here, we started integrating TASEL. You might ask, TASEL is already a standalone program. Why integrate it there? So the answer, again, is that 
reproducibility. If you want your steps to be captured uh, and published, it's better to use a, 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 a web-based application. So we have incorporated Tassel, some of the functionalities of Tassel now. So this is a Tassel output coming from a Galaxy instance that we have uh, in prototype at, at Erie. So aside from this uh, benefit, you would also benefit from the power of the computer that is running the Galaxy instance. For instance, you, you can run Tassel only in your laptop with limited RAM, but you could benefit from the, the big uh, memory and high CPU specs of the server that we are running this instance of Tassel on. Okay, so this slide just summarizes uh, what we already incorporated as tools in Erie Galaxy. In bold are the ones that are uh, uh, working now. In uh, italics are the ones that we are uh, currently having a prototype. So it's from the range of just SNP calling, data exploration, uh, your genetic analysis, QTL analysis, GWAS, and uh, up to diversity and population structure analysis. Okay, the last feature of, ta of Galaxy I want to show here is the tool shed. So any application that you integrate into Galaxy could also be published. So other institutes who have running Galaxy instances can import your tools. So it's like a, uh, an, an app store. So we have that functionality in Galaxy. All right, so I am just showing this as an example. The tools that I have shown you before are already available in a prototype tool shed. Okay, so this is the roadmap for Erie Galaxy. We envision it to be serving first. Well, we envisioned it to serve first the genotyping service lab, of course. So from generation of data, it already can flow to the Erie Galaxy as a, date, as, as a shared data resource. You can do all your analysis here as a, as a, as a genotyping service lab uh, client. And then it's also, by default, it's also open to scientific community, community users, non-GSL uh, uh, customers. And then, of course, the output would be if you need just data that is ready for analysis, we, we have that. And then if you want to publish your analysis workflows, uh, supporting your, your main manuscript publication, it could also be hosting that. So we're working towards that end that Erie Galaxy delivers on those, uh, on those features. Okay, so I have a few minutes to shift for genotyping data management. So we have a very uh, small development here still because uh, this is a daunting task and then we have a need right now for our medium throughput data set. So right away, we, uh, we saw that the genotype data management system being developed by ITRISAT under Trushar would be easily amenable for our needs right now. And uh, of course, these are just slides that show you the, the origin of the GDMS. This is probably an old screen capture I have here. It doesn't look this way anymore. But this is the GDMS. Of course, this is the IBP uh, GDMS. And uh, right now, I'm just showing you a series of screenshots how we used it as it is. But we just created a public account. We used the, the resource itself to load our uh, low throughput SNP genotyping data. And uh, we already have been using it to store the uh, genotyping data matrix and retrieving the data matrix that's being stored here and uh, exporting it to the formats that we are familiar with. So I'm showing here now that this is now deployed for 2000 germplasm uh, using the 384 SNP uh, platform that is uh, first initially used by the GSL. Okay, so right now you may be familiar with it. This is a hap map format that's being outputted by uh, by uh, well, I guess a, a matrix format being outputted by GM, GDMS. 
also one of the uses we have for it now is this is a nifty function for for finding polymorphic markers between any lines of interest. So we've been using it for this low throughput screening of polymorphic markers between any lines of interest stored there. And in our roadmap here, we intend to install GDMS as a data source also in, in the Erie Galaxy. So you'd see the familiar interface, but there would be an export to Galaxy function that enables you to use it as a data source. And then once you get data into out of it, you can proceed with the analysis that's already built into Erie Galaxy. Okay, so for conclusions, we, we have used, uh, we are using web-based open source platforms to, to build our data analysis workbench. We are using Galaxy for this. Currently, it's tightly integrated with the GSL at ERI, and we are focusing on having it uh, process medium throughput genotyping data sets. And also, we're storing these data sets using the GDMS. Uh, we are customizing it so that it handles, it can handle NGS-based or high-throughput genotyping data sets such as GBS. And right now, uh, it's been interesting to attend this meeting so that we are seeing now that what kind of needs there are for plant breeders and geneticists so that we can incorporate the tools that you need and we, we see how you would want to interact with the tools, how you intend to use the tools themselves. So with that, I conclude my talk. Thank you. Very useful platform. Um, uh, are you planning to link this genotypic data management system with the phenotypic data? Uh, and what are your, uh, what is your perspective on this? Yes, uh, we just didn't present that uh, aspect of the work, but that's also being developed. Uh, it's more in the context of uh, the Informatics Rice Consortium, uh, International Rice Informatics Consortium led by Nikolai Alexandrov. But our intent there is still is to use open source uh, software tools for the database schema development. And we might use... Uh, uh, some commercial tools like the database backend could be an oracle. But this is just for because we are running it inside Erie. But once the software platform is developed, it should be open source to the community. Um, Mao, sorry, is this going to be uh, linked to the, be to the breeding management system? Uh, or breeding information management system, which will serve the breeding program, or are these two separate? No, endeavors? it's going to be linked. So I, I'm also involved with the breeding group now, and we are seeing this as the analysis component of uh, the breeding management system. So we can pull data out of the BMS and feed it into this system, and then flow data back into the to the database they are developing. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we...